We do want to take you out live now, right now, to an event that we're following out of Wiley, Texas. The Cross Church there hosting a community vigil in honor of these two sisters, Daniela and Sofia Mendoza, just 11 and 8 years old. They died in the May 6th shooting in Allen, Texas at the mall. Their mom was also wounded in this. Let's listen in live here to this vigil in Texas. You may be seated. Thank you for being here tonight. You know, as I was driving here on my way tonight, I was thinking about the purpose for us being here, and we're going to honor these two little beautiful girls. And we're also here for healing. But the one thing that came into my mind, into my heart, because I have three little grandchildren, it was a little bit of anger. And we can't fight evil and wickedness with sticks and chains and guns. But we can fight it on our knees. And we gathering here tonight, all different people from different backgrounds and different denominations and different colors and different hair textures. This said to me, that we're going to pray to an almighty God and not allow this to infiltrate our communities. That we're going to stand firm and not allow the enemy to come in and steal and kill and destroy. And I know it's hard because we're healing. We also have to show him that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Can I get an amen tonight? I'm here to pray for our teachers, and I know there's probably dozens of you that are here tonight, so I want to pray for the teachers and for the staff, for God's continued protection and his wisdom upon you as you lead our children and you create a culture and atmosphere for them to be viable citizens in our communities. If you would bow with me. Father, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, because we know that you are here tonight. We thank you, God, for our teachers and staff, all of the members of Cox Elementary, and not just Cox, but all of our schools. 
For Father, they need your power and your presence. Continue to empower them, Lord. Continue to give them peace and comfort, God. A comfort that can only come from you. And God, we ask that you would go throughout the schools, that your hand of peace and protection would rest and rule and abide upon our staff and our teachers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom as they lead and train, as they equip and empower our young people to be good citizens in our community. And Father, we give you praise for what you've done in their lives and through these teachers in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for protection. We thank you for peace. We thank you for unity in our school amongst our staff and teachers. And we pray, God, that you would give them to wisdom to not just impart information and education, but to impart your power, to impart your righteousness as they teach and as they model your goodness. We give you praise, God, and we just stand on your word tonight and we believe that it is done in the name of of Jesus. We thank you and all the praise and all the glory and honor belong to you. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. So I have the honor of uh, praying over our first responders and, and, and doctors and as I was thinking about what verse to share and uh, what to talk about tonight, um, just thank you, kept coming to mind. Um, and so before we read this text, I just want to say thank you. Uh, you are all a, a blessing that in the, the midst of this tragedy and the, the moment that we find ourselves, that um, we get to mourn together. And, and there's blessing in that. So thank you for providing that for me, uh, a pastor in this community to be able to, to look across this room in a place that, that we wouldn't think we'd ever be and still feel blessed is, is the grace of God. So thank you. Um, we're going to be in Colossians 1, uh, verse 3. And it's a very simple text. It says, we always thank God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. It's a very simple text that, that Paul was writing uh, to a group of believers. Uh, it's an exhortation, uh, a thank you, a prayer of thanksgiving for them. And as I think about our first responders, as I think about our, our doctors and those in the healthcare uh, community, uh, thank you. you. You provide a service that we can't do on our own. And that's why Paul is writing a thank you. He's thanking this group of people for doing something that he wasn't physically able to do or to be there. Uh, and that needed a, a prayer of thanksgiving. And I love the way that that verse starts out because it says, I always thank God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when I pray for you. He understands what, what blessing they are to him personally and the blessing that they are uh, to the community. So first responders in this room, and, and in this community and, and uh, the doctors and nurses that care for us so well. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you because you provide a service that we can't provide on our own. And you watch over us and you carry a, an extreme weight. And a lot of us don't quite fully understand the, the magnitude of the weight that you carry, uh, but we can thank you for it. So join me as we pray for our, our first responders and our doctors and those in the healthcare community. Lord, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the opportunity we get to, to mourn uh, together. That in, even in the midst of, of, of tragedy, that we're able to lock arms and, and be there for one another, to encourage one another, to thank one another. And again, Lord, just to be able to mourn alongside, that we're not alone, that you are with us. And Lord, I just lift up uh, the first responders in our community, the first responders in this room, where we thank you for the calling that you've put on their life the opportunity for the, the service that they provide that, that we can't provide for ourselves. 
Lord, I thank you for the doctors and nurses and those in the healthcare community as they uh, carry away to, to take care of us, to watch over for us. Lord, the healing that they provide physically. Lord, I pray that you also give them uh, the wisdom to provide that spiritually as well. And so, Lord, we, we, we thank you for providing them to us tonight. We thank you for the healing that comes in, in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
That is who he is. Folks, we just got a glimpse of heaven. Every tribe, every tongue. I look out at this room right now, and I see a reflection of heaven. And we get a glimpse of why we can mourn and why we do not mourn as those who have no hope. I've been asked to pray for the Mendoza family tonight. And I was thinking through how to respond to something like this. I struggled. And then I remembered that I should probably look to my model, Jesus Christ, and how I responded to this. Like I looked to him for everything. And so what came to me right away was a verse, it's the shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35, it's only two words, you can go home tonight saying you memorized a Bible verse, if you know it, say it with me, Jesus wept. Jesus was there on the scene after his good friend Lazarus had passed away. And even though Jesus knew how the story was going to end, he knew the redemption on the other side of the story. In that moment, Jesus wept. Our Savior knows grief. He knows loss. And you know what Jesus did next after that? Jesus prayed. And so I'd like to encourage us to do that together as a community, as we are here to lift up this family. Would you join me as we pray for the Mendoza family? Dear Lord, we look to you in a world where Sometimes there's no good answers other than you. And God, we ask that you come around this family in a way that can only come from you, Lord. You blanket them in peace, comfort. You mourn with them as we mourn with them. Lord, I pray for the little cousins. I pray for the aunts and the uncles, and the nieces and the nephews. Lord, I pray for the mom. Lord, I pray for physical healing for her. And more than that, Lord, I pray for emotional, spiritual comfort and healing for her. Lord, I pray for the father. I celebrate the way that he loves and leads this family. And God, would you allow everyone that comes into contact with this family, whether it's now, a week from now, a month from now, 10 years from now, God, would you use every person that comes in contact with this family to pour out your love and grace on them. In your precious name we pray. Amen. palabra en español para la familia, para la comunidad. Están Romanos 15, versículo 13, y dice así, y el Dios de esperanza os llena de todo gozo y paz en el creer, para que abundéis en esperanza por el poder del Espíritu Santo. Cuando estaba escuchando a 
todos los oradores hoy yo no conozco Daniela, Sofía pero siento un quebranto porque siento el quebranto de ustedes You're continuing to listen in here and watch this vigil as uh, they're speaking in Spanish now, recapping uh, a bit more of what was just said in that previous prayer. This prayer service has been planned for the two young sisters who were killed in this mass shooting in Allen, Texas. The photos of those two girls pictured there, 11-year-old Daniela Mendoza and her eight-year-old sister, Sophia being remembered this evening at the Cross Church near downtown Wiley in Texas. They were among eight people killed in the May 6 mass shooting at the Allen Premium Outlets. Their mom was also critically injured, but survived. As of last week, she was still in the hospital, though we haven't received an update on her condition, but uh, the church community here continuing to pray for her recovery, as well as her husband, the girl's father in this, praying for his strength through this incredibly difficult time. We're going to continue to listen in here to this vigil. Un día, si tenemos fe en nuestro Señor Jesucristo, esto va a terminar. Un día, padre de familia, madre de familia, familiares, un día, en el fe de Jesucristo, van a volver a ver a Sofía y a Daniela. Un día este dolor va a pasar y va a ser reemplazado por un gloria eterna que tiene Dios para ustedes. Un día Dios limpiará todo lágrima, todo lágrima de sus caras cuando estás en la presencia de Dios. Y ahí todo será diferente. Entonces yo quiero decirle, aunque estamos en este momento tan difícil, que hay esperanza y esa esperanza es nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Ok, quiero orar por todos. Padre Santo, venimos en el nombre, sobre todo nombre, el nombre de Jesús. Y Señor, en medio de esta tragedia, en medio de este dolor, Señor, yo pido que mientras camina esta familia Mendoza por la valle de sombra de muerte que tú le Okay, this prayer is still continuing here in Spanish. We're going to take this moment to take a quick commercial break. We'll bring you back out to this live prayer service right after this.
Welcome back. You're watching live now from Fox. I'm Lexi Petrovich. We're going to take you back out live to this vigil that's being held for two sisters who were killed in a mass shooting at the Allen Outlet Mall in Texas on May 6. Let's continue listening in here live at this church service in Wiley, Texas. Great word when it says, Gran palabra de verdad. It says there's peace in your presence. Hay paz en su presencia. I was uh, thinking about that over these last few days. Estaba pensando en eso estos últimos días. Uh, because I have a special connection with Cox Elementary School. Porque tengo una conexión especial con la escuela Cox. And that my wife is the counselor there, Amy. Porque mi esposa trabaja como consejera ahí, Amy Segrist. It was 7:28 uh, a week ago Monday. Era 7:28 hace una semana lunes. I got this text that said, "I've got to talk to you immediately." Y vi un texto que me decía, "Tengo que hablar contigo inmediatamente." I had no idea what that would mean. No tenía idea lo que significaba. At that moment. En ese momento. Because I don't know if you're married, you know that that can mean a million different things, right? Usted puede saber cuando estás casado que puede significar cualquier cosa. And when I called her, y cuando lo llamé, 
She told me she wasn't able to talk at that moment because she had to do the school announcements. Ella no podía hablar en ese momento porque tenía que anunciarlo en la escuela. And she had just received the word from the district about the Mendoza girls. Porque había escuchado la noticia de las niñas Mendoza. And she said to pray for her. Se por favor ore por mí. And to pray for the staff. Ore por el staff. And pray for the kids. Ore por los niños. It was going to be a really hard day. Iba a ser demasiado duro. She began to tell me the story of these two sweet girls. Entonces ella empezó a contar la historia de estas they were, bellas niñas. They were always dressed really cute. Que siempre se vestía muy muy they linda. Had sí. sweet personalities. Tenía muy buen personalidad. And always met her at the door with a hug. Y siempre tenía un abrazo para ella en la puerta. They always had really cool water bottles. Y también tenía como botellas muy lindas de agua. And my, uh, my wife would always comment on those. Y siempre mi esposa comentaba sobre las botellas. In fact, the la latest uh, water bottle that Amy has el último botella que tiene Amy is a Stanley water bottle es uno de Stanley that the Mendoza girls gave her que las niñas Mendoza le obsequió thoughtful young ladies niñas muy apreciables and I was thinking about this story y estaba pensando de esta historia about the senseless violence sobre esta violencia que no tiene sentido it took their lives llevó sus vidas their innocence, su inocencia, way too soon, demasiado pronto. And I started to think about a story, y empecé a pensar en la historia, about Jesus' cousin, sobre el primo de Jesús, a man by the name of John the Baptist. El primo se llamaba Juan el Bautista. And John the Baptist uh, had done nothing wrong. Y Juan el Bautista no había hecho nada mal. And he was also a victim. Él también uh, fue víctima at the hands of a man by the name of Herod. De una persona que se llamaba Herodes. And after he had been murdered, y cuando lo asesinaron, the disciples of John, los discípulos de, de Juan, went to Jesus. Fueron a Jesús. And there's one verse in Matthew chapter 14, verse 12. Hay un versículo en la Biblia en Mateo, um, Fourteen. 14, versículo 12. That if you just kind of read it, you may not even notice it. It says this. Y dice esto, and his disciples came y sus discípulos llegaron, and took the body y llevaron, and el, buried it. Llevaron el cuerpo y lo enterraron, and they went y fueron, and they told Jesus. Y dijeron a Jesús. And I was thinking about that. Y estaba pensando sobre eso. Because tonight that's what we do as a community. Porque eso lo que hacemos como una comunidad. And we do live in a very blessed community. Realmente vivimos en una comunidad muy bendecida. It's very few places. Hay muy pocos lugares. We're two cities like Wiley and Saxe. Que hay ciudades como Wiley y Saxe. Would both join together. Estamos aquí unidos. Their cities, son ciudades. Their first responders, los primeros auxilios. To be in an event like this, estando un evento así. We're blessed to have a school district. Estamos muy bendecidos del distrito escolar. We're blessed to have city officials from both of our cities. Somos bendecidos tener los oficiales de las dos ciudades. We're blessed to have a faith community like these men behind Estamos me. Estamos tan bendecidos tener una comunidad de fe aquí atrás de nosotros. That we all come together. Que aquí todos estamos unidos. Because when one hurts, porque cuando uno le duele, we all hurt. Todos dolemos. And we hurt for you, Mendoza family. Y nosotros dolemos por usted, familia. We want you to know we're going to be here with you. Y queremos que usted sepa que nosotros know, estamos aquí y estamos por ustedes y te amamos. The disciples of John knew. Los discípulos de Juan sabía something about Jesus. Sabían algo de Jesús. Because Jesus told us in John chapter 16, verse 33. Porque Jesús nos dijo en Juan 16, versículo 33. He told us there would be days like this. Él nos dijo que iba a haber días así. He said these words. Dijo estas palabras. He said, I've told you these things. Yo le he dicho estas cosas. That in me. Que en el mundo. 
you may have peace. Para que usted en mí tenga paz. Porque en este mundo, in this world, en este mundo, you will have tribulation. Habrá aflicción. But take heart. Pero no se desanime. I have overcome the world. Porque yo he vencido. You know, of all the things that Jesus was called in the Old Testament. De todas las cosas que Jesús fue nombrado en el, el Nuevo Testamento. One of those was the Prince of Peace. Una de las cosas que lo nombraron Príncipe de Paz. Peace is not the absence of problems. La paz no es la ausencia de problemas. Peace is the presence of Jesus in the midst of those problems. Paz es la presencia de Jesús en los problemas. And because that is problemas. true. Y porque eso es verdad. I want you to know Jesus is right here tonight. Yo quiero decirle que Jesús está aquí. I want aquí you to know that noche. Jesus is with this family. Yo quiero decirle que Jesús está con la familia. I want you to know that familia. Jesus is with this community. Yo quiero decirle que Jesús está con esta comunidad. And I want you to know this. Y yo quiero que ustedes sepan esto. That this Prince of Peace. Que that he sees que él vía, and he knows y él sabe, and that he cares y él le and my hope and heart y mi esperanza, y mi, de mi corazón, is that the peace of Jesus que la paz de Jesús, would rule and reign que reina in our hearts en nuestros corazones, and in this community en esta comunidad. because the hope of the world Porque la esperanza del mundo is found in the Prince of Peace. Está encontrado en el Príncipe de Paz. And if you don't know him personally, y si no lo conoces personalmente, I want to challenge you tonight. Yo quiero a, a, a hacerle un reto esta noche. To, to stop one of these men that you've heard speaking. Buscar uno de estos hombres que usted stop vio at, hablar. To stop at one of the tents on the way out. O salir a uno de los tiendas que están a to, las orillas a la salida. To go to this room called the Connection Center. O hay un cuarto atrás que se llama el Centro de Conexión and ask somebody Pregunte por alguien, how you can know this Prince of Peace personally. ¿Cómo puedes conocer este príncipe de paz? Because it's only through the Prince of Peace Solo por medio del príncipe de paz, that we can experience que nosotros podemos experimentar God's highest and best. La más alto de Dios. I was thinking about this tragedy Estaba pensando esta tragedia. And the question that always arises in a thing like this el pensamiento que siempre viene en circunstancias así, is why. Es por qué. Why does the things like this happen? ¿Por qué cosas así suceden? And the reality is y la realidad es, we're never going to understand that. La realidad es que nunca vamos a entender. We will never understand that this side of eternity. Nunca vamos a entenderlo este lado de la eternidad. What we can do is we can know the Prince of Peace. Pero lo que sí podemos es conocer el Príncipe de Paz. And he can do in us. Y él puede hacer en nosotros. What we are unable to do in ourselves. Lo que nosotros no podemos hacer por nosotros solos. For people who follow Jesus. Por la gente que sigue a Jesucristo. One of the hardest things you have to do. Una de las cosas más difíciles lo que tiene que hacer. Is to continue to follow Jesus. Es continuar siguiendo a Jesús. Even though you don't always understand why. Aunque no entiendes el por qué. So perhaps the question we should ask ourselves tonight. Ahora quizás la pregunta que tenemos que preguntarnos. Is what now? Es ahora qué. What do we do now? Qué hacemos ahora? And what I can tell you is this. Y lo que yo le puedo decir es esto. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Más grande es el que está en nosotros que que está en el mundo. Is Martin Luther King? Como dijo el reverendo Martin Luther King, who once said, él dijo una vez, that darkness does not drive out darkness. La oscuridad no saca la oscuridad. Only light does that. Solo la luz saca la oscuridad. In Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, y Jesucristo, el príncipe de paz, is the light of the world. Es la luz de este mundo. And so tonight, as we end our time together, y qué bueno que tenemos este tiempo juntos. What we want to do. Lo que queremos hacer is we want to light candles together. Queremos encender un candela junto. We want to realize through queremos, that. Que, queremos darnos cuenta que through that symbol, por este simbolismo, that we're going to hold up the light of Jesus. Que vamos a poner en alto la luz de Jesús. And we're going to remember the lives of these young girls. Y vamos a recordar la memoria de estas dos niñas.
you please stand to your feet? We just for a moment, just in the quietness of this moment, can we just pray for the Mendoza family quietly? Lord Jesus, as we depart, I pray that you would be with this family who's lost so much. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be all that we've talked about tonight. You'd be their hope. You'd be their portion. You'd be their peace. Father, I pray that you would give them grace. Grace is your enablement to do what we cannot do in our own. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be in this community. I pray that you would protect it from evil people and things and influences. Father, we ask that you would put your hand upon this community. We ask for your favor upon this community. And Father, I ask that you would be with each one of these children, um, each one of these educators, each one of these administrators, each who have lost a friend, a student. I just ask that you would be with them in a very personal and real way. And I ask Jesus in the midst of these things that we would not be people, as it's been said, who would, who would weep as those who have no hope. We know you, the Prince of Peace. Might you be more real to us today in our individual lives in this community than ever before. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.
Okay, you were watching live there, listening in to this prayer service being held for the victims, two of the victims in this tragedy out of Allen, Texas, two sisters who were killed on May 6th, the community gathering here at this church in Wiley, Texas, to pay their respects to them as they continue to pray for their mother who continues to recover. We're gonna take a quick commercial break here. We'll be right back.